Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you are new here, hi! My name is Natasha and it's fantastic to have you here. For today's video, we are doing something I have never done before on this channel, and we are counting down my top five picks for the most disappointing tarot decks that came out this year, 2021. It is December, and um, usually um, I've liked, I've been liking to get into the habit of doing my top five picks of tarot decks um, that I've, I've just loved that came out in the year, same with Oracle. So there were quite a couple uh, tarot decks that I was not impressed with that came out this year that were quite disappointing. So I thought I would try this as well. Um, to add to this, this video is not meant to hate, shame, degrade any author, artist, publisher, any of that. It's simply meant as education and as why I do not like it. Uh, this is the reason why. That is all. Um, I know a lot of you share the same concerns as I do. And so this is just merely a compilation of all of those attributes. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start the countdown with number five. All right. Don't hate me <laughs> because this is not what it looks like. So my number five is the Goetia Tarot and Darkness by Fabio Lestrani. This is published by Los Carobio, retelling for $26.95. This is the very bottom of my list and it's only on my list for two reasons. I actually really like the deck. I think there's a lot of value in this deck. I think there's a niche market that will really, really devour this deck in the right way. And that's valid and cool and awesome. So this is no way hate toward this deck because I think it's really cool. The reasons it's on my list is personal reasons. Um, and so again, I make these lists from my own thoughts and opinions. And whatever you guys think about these decks are valid and your own thoughts and opinions. So now that we got that out of the way, I will tell you why it's on my list. So First of all, it's very well done. I love the packaging and I think that the concept is really cool. If you haven't seen my uh, video on it, please go do. I will link it up in the eye wherever it chooses to be. Um, this deck is really cool and a great, awesome concept. It's all about, you know, demons and associating the demons with the tarot card energy. And I don't know anything about the Goetia. I don't know anything about demonology. And so when I saw the guidebook, I was really wanting more. And that's my top one of the reasons why it's on this list is that I really wanted a bigger explanation and a longer explanation maybe about um, each of the cards and why the demon was chosen for that card. There's a, enough information to get you by here, so it's fine in that regard. However, I was really wanting more. I was left feeling like there was a lack of information. But that's just for me personally, because again, like I said, this isn't a topic that I know a lot about, nor is it a topic that I actively search out information on. But it's a really cool concept for a tarot deck, and so I was really excited about that. Second, and only other reason why it's on my list is because your girl is getting old. <laughs> and so as somebody who reads tarot basically all day, this is not a deck that I could see myself sitting and using for hours on end strictly because of the way the art is set up. Um, I get that that was the whole point and the whole concept behind this deck is that it was supposed to be dark and, you know, quite gothic, if that's the terminology I can use. However, for me, I see all of this detail and I think it's gorgeous. And whilst the art is amazing and beautifully done, for me personally, it's really hard for my eyes to adjust and see everything clearly like I should. So again, like I said, while it's stunning and beautiful, I find myself having a hard time wanting to use it because my eyes strain. And so that is not a dig or any hate toward uh, Fabio at all. It just is strictly my opinion and my experience using it. And like I said, it is a beautifully done deck. I think there is value in it. However, personally, that's why it's disappointing to me because the topic I don't know enough about and then the art style, the, the just darkness of it 
it's a little too hard for me, but that's it. So again, if you love this deck, it is valid. You are valid. It isn't, there's nothing inherently wrong with this deck. It's just personal opinion. So that's my number five. Let me know what you think in the comments about this deck if this is one of your favorites i would love to know why and if you don't like it if the for the same reasons please let me know if i uh was relating to you all right that being said let's go on to number four all right my number four so this is the fairy tale tarot deck by golden age slash prime muse they're a company out of korea which i was really excited about it says copyright 2020. However, when I went to check and double check um, when it was first published, it said 2021. So I'm going to go with that. And that's when I heard about it. So I, we're going with that. <laughs> so I was really excited about this because it looked really fun. It looked really gentle and really cool and different. And I thought it was going to feature fairy tales similar to Tarot of the Divine. And most of you know my love for Tarot of Divine. So I was really excited to see this. It kind of reminded me about the um, Liminal 11 packaging. So I was like, okay, cool, let's, let's check it out. It was 35 or $36, I can't quite recall. Um, it actually is pretty decent packaging. So it's magnet like this and it's all pretty inside. Um, but then the disappointing things started showing their faces. So it is not based upon any fairy tales at all. It is essentially more cartoonized version of the Rider Waite Smith deck, which is completely fine and valid. However, I feel like it was very much a false advertising situation. Um, it's fun in its own way. It's very cute. It's very gentle. I can see like more preteens using this. I can see, um, you know, ch more of like, you know, adolescents kind of using this um, or people who need more of a gentle deck using it. Um, I'm trying to find the devil card because I can't remember what it looked like. Um, I haven't picked this up to use it uh, since I purchased it and made the video on it. There's the double card. Um, and the reason is I, I don't really find myself connected to it because it just seems more like a another Rider Waite Smith deck. And I personally have my favorite Rider Waite Smith deck that I use if I'm going to be using that specifically. It shuffles just fine. I really do like the blue foiling on the sides, on the edges there. That was really fun. And it does come with a different version of the court cards. They're like more cartoony animal otter looking like guys. And I didn't quite understand why those were added. Um, and again, this is why I feel like the deck is maybe geared toward more juvenile um, age groups, but I could be wrong. Um, and But the guidebook was decent too. It comes in Korean and, as well as English. Um, there's a lot of really good uh, meanings in here. We have a, a meaning, a basic meaning, and then we have um, a blurb for wealth, affection, movement, and health. So in and of itself, that's pretty fun and great um, and good information to have. But the disappointing thing comes with, you know, the false advertisement of it all, where I can understand that maybe fairy tale can mean that it was a more um, fantastic look, like a more fantasy look for the writer Wait, Smith version. That would make sense. However, again, when you say fairy tale, you would think fairy tale, you know, the Brothers Grimm, uh, Mother Goose, that sort of a thing. And I was hoping that that's what I would see here. But what I see more is a, I'm going to call it more of a knockoff version of the, the Liminal 11 style with a cartoon Rider Waite Smith imagery, if that makes sense. So that's why I was disappointed. I had a lot of hope and uh, I wanted to really like it, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not a deck that I feel called to. So that's my number four. Let me know what you think down in the comments and you can go ahead and check out the video I have for this unboxing as well. 
All right, my number three. Most of you have seen this recently. This is the Cthulhu Dark Arts Tarot. This is by published by Cyranos, and it's by the Bordifem duo. Um, 78 cards and a booklet. It retails for $30 in the U.S. and $38 in Canada, $21.99 in the U.K. I had high hopes. I really wanted to like it. Um, first of all, the packaging is really kind of difficult to get the cards out. <laughs> There's no like little tab to pull or to help pull, like, you know, cut out. Um, the guidebook is really lacking. Um, and on that note, I really want to talk about the guidebook real fast. I was really hoping because I am not well versed in the HP Lovecraft works. I've not read anything. All I know about is the monster Cthulhu. And I watched the first episode of Love Lovecraft Country. So that's where my Lovecraftian knowledge ends. Um, and so what I was hoping for was a blurb or an explanation as to why they chose a particular character for the tarot card and maybe why it worked for that. However, we didn't get any of that. We got just basic keywords for each card and we got a reversal. So, I mean, for for how basic it is, it still works. However, that's disappointment number one. So a lack of information pretty much. Disappointment number two was the size of these cards. I mean, they're bigger than my hand, first of all. Um, so it's not easy to shuffle by any means. Like I, I can't shuffle <laughs> this way. Um, I can shuffle this way, which is fine. You know, that's not a big deal, but I can't shuffle the way that I normally do the overhand way really well. It will take an eternity for me to try to do that. And that's how I, like to shuffle. So for me, this deck is kind of unusable. Um, so that was another disappointment. And then my other big disappointment is it's a pip deck. Now, there's nothing wrong with the pip deck. Um, but if you compare this artwork to the pip deck artwork, wouldn't you want more of this? Like, it is stunning. It is beautifully rendered. Like what what amazing detail that is in there. Look at this. So they did have court cards that were illustrated, but like, ugh. and then I just feel like a little bit more of an explanation as to why they chose certain characters or certain creatures. Because again, if I were a beginner and I only knew, you know, of Cthulhu and I didn't know of any other of these creatures, I would be wanting more information. It would be very hard for me to read intuitively. Um, so that's where my disappointment lies. I want more art like this for the rest of the deck. It almost feels like a cop out. It almost feels like, okay, well, we did the main thing, so we don't need to do any more. And I'm not saying that that's what happened, but I'm saying that that's what it feels like. It almost feels like, okay, we did the bare minimum, or we ran out of money, or the publisher got in the way, or corporation things. You know, anything could happen in getting in, in the way of producing a deck, right? But for me personally, this was just a huge disappointment all around because when you look at the major arcana, you look at the artwork and the art style and you think this is really cool, this is awesome, and then there's no like follow through with it. So I was really hoping that this would be a fun, uh, different dark deck that would be really cool for shadow work or just really cool for those of you who like creepy monsters and stuff. But we're wanting more and it just feels like things were left out, if that makes sense. So that was a big letdown for me. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to completely connect with this deck simply because of the topic. Other than that, I really had hope that it would be really cool and dynamic and Again, the Major Arcana really is, and the rest of it just lacks. And their price point, I feel like it's pretty expensive for what you're getting. I feel like maybe the price point could have been a little bit lower due to the fact that, you know, 
all of those things that I mentioned. Um, however, it is a newer publishing company. It's a new branch. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt there. I know this started out as a Kickstarter and I heard some interesting things about all of that. So I don't know, just really disappointed. I feel like it could have been a lot better than what it ended up being. Let me know your thoughts about this one down in the comments too. And so now we're getting to the top two guys and I bet you can tell exactly what they are. <laughs> All right, another recent one, number two, the Tarot Reconnect With You by Sarah Bartlett. This is published by Octopus Books, and uh, it says a link for the illustrations. Um, and so we'll talk about that. Um, first of all, I cannot stand this packaging. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on with it. The more I try to think about it, the more it, it just baffles me. Um, this wasn't a really expensive deck. This retails for, I think, $19.99, um, at least here in the U.S. So that being said, I compare it to the Kiko uh, tarot decks. So like the Oceanic tarot, the Crystal Power tarot, etc., which are decent quality for the price tag. At least with them, you get a nice little guidebook and the quality of the tarot deck is really cool too. Like it should be around there, right? So Sarah Bartlett, she writes a lot of tarot books and of the sort, and the book itself is really good. I really, really like the book. It's the packaging and the lack of imagination with the tarot art for me. So in the book, before we get to the cards, in the book, there's so much real raw information that can help you as a beginner. It is really nicely laid out. There's just, you know, you you name it, it's in here. So I was really happy about the book. And that in and of itself was like, all right, we're off to a fantastic start. Let's get to it. But then we get to the cards. And the card stock itself is not that, not that fantastic. It's super on the more paper side than it is on the cardstock side, um, which not a deal breaker. But then let's talk about the images as a whole. There's no cohesive look to it. They look like tattoos, which is fantastic. I like the art style, but as a deck, it doesn't make sense cohesively. I don't see, there's a lot of space symbolism and then there's a King Tut and then there's, you know, more modern looking things. And then I, it just, it, it, it kind of breaks my mind a little bit seeing it. And then uh, if that's not crazy enough, it's a pip deck. And again, nothing wrong with a pip deck, but this deck as a whole, you would think with the title that it would be more about self-care, self-love, reconnecting with your intuition, with your inner wisdom, with yourself. It again, seems like false advertising in that way because you get none of that with the images. And then to top that off, the court cards are the same. They're exactly the same. The only difference is there's a different color in the background. So as a beginner, you tell me, would this help you learn? Would this help, you know, you get your intuition hits? No, right? So again, this is not bashing. This is just being a criticizing in a healthy way. I'm trying. So I'm frustrated because I feel like it was what it seemed like and what we discussed about in the um, live that we did about this. It feels like someone saw images that they liked and were like, okay, I like these. So let's try to fit them on the card. Like this, I would look at this card and think that this was more of a high priestess card than I would the magician. And then the fool, it kind of makes sense. This is, this is a scuba diver, but then there's space. I'm just, I'm a little confused, right? So that's all I'm saying is it feels like a lack of cohesion and it just really feels like the love went into the book and authoring the book, which awesome. We need more amazing tarot resources, 
But if you bought this as a set hoping to learn on it, it would frustrate you completely. I know it would me. I am pretty well versed in tarot. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but this would confuse even me, like trying to read with it. It's, it's not something that I look at and say, I want to engage in that. I want to use it. Now, there were really cool images that I liked and really awesome um, concepts for those images. But again, like it just, if you're going to do a pip deck, there's ways of doing it that you can kind of get intuitive hits with. That's why I kind of like some of, um, like there's a, there's a bunch of them that I do like, um, which I won't get into, but um, I just feel like there's a lot of things that are lacking in this deck that are disappointing. And um, I don't understand for the life of me why the same images are on the same cards, um, the same court cards. Um, but yeah, if I'm reading with this, I wouldn't understand and I wouldn't feel comfortable using it. And if you're using it in front of a client, I think that they would pick up on that too. Like, why are they the same card if they're different energies? And again, my pet peeve of having to split <laughs> split the deck to put it away, it just drives me crazy. Um, so the packaging is really lacking for me as well. I feel like it. there's no way to store this in a very good way other than, you know, flat on your bookshelf. Um, so again, for the price point, it was starting off really good. The book, fantastic book. I really do think that if you could just buy the book and, and then put it with a different deck, that would be fantastic. But that's just my opinion. Again, that's just my opinion. So yeah, it was a it was a big no for me after we went through it and we saw all those things. I was really hoping for more, especially with the authors uh, who authored it. So again, this this is no hate. This is just me critiquing the the concept and the quality and everything in general so if this was a deck that you were disappointed with let me know down in the comments too and I like this makes me feel so bad because again a lot of these could be somebody's passion projects but the the whole point of my channel is to educate and to show you what is out there so that is what I'm doing I am just simply educating my number one my number one disappointing deck from 2021 and possibly of all time the cosmo tarot this deck broke me long and short of it i i tried filming this already and it ended up being like an 11 minute rant as to why and i'm like well we already have the video for that so i'm gonna break it down really quickly as to why it is my top one First of all, it is $22 slash $29 in Canada for this. So keep that in mind. This obviously is a uh, deck by the magazine Cosmopolitan. And I had really high hopes only because of the brand name and the recognition and validation it could give our community. And as a beginner going into the shop and seeing a brand name behind a deck, making that be a, a validation in and of itself, you would think that that would be an opportunity for them to go really hard on the deck and be exciting. So the beginner would look at that and want to choose them because they recognize the name. That's not the case here, folks. The case here is that this guidebook reads like a horoscope, um, they say that this is extremely beginner friendly. It's not. Um, we're going to kibosh that real quick. The deck, like I said, reads like a horoscope. For instance, here's the fool. Sometimes it's nice not knowing what to expect. So go with it. Enjoy the unknown. While that would be great at like the bottom of the blurb as to what the fool means, it's not a be all end all for a beginner. What, 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 what? <laughs> so going on from that, there's like, the smallest sentence for each each card. So the guidebook, not great. And then we have the wonderful cards itself. They are tiny, they're small. That in and of itself is not bad. However, uh, they all look the same. There's no depiction of what is the meaning of the card really. Now granted there are some like this one that are pretty decent. 
but they all look the same. They all use the same three things, it seems. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at the majors real fast. They, like I said, all use the same images. There's a frame, a gold frame, diamonds, and some body part. That's it. Like, what does it even mean? What does this mean? Like, and it looks so poorly done. It looks like they literally took their magazine, went through, cut out the different models features and tacked it on in Photoshop. Like that's basically the feel of this deck. There, there's nothing unique really about it. As somebody who's a seasoned reader, this really bugs me and makes me feel icky. Uh, long and short of it, it feels like a cash grab. Uh, it feels like we have been had. Like, it's like, oh, we have the name. Let's tap into a market that we don't normally tap into with our own deck and see um, how much money we can make off of these people. And I, that's this is the result. It feels like it was poorly done. It feels like no passion, no love, nothing was put into it. The quality is not really good. And again, let's just compare this deck to something like, for instance, the Disney Villains Tarot. Um, that deck is like, it's in a similar price point. What would you think is better quality? Not this one. Like if you put the two together, like, uh, no. <laughs> So there's there's a lot of reasons why I don't like this deck, but the biggest one is I feel like it's not doing our community any favors. In fact, I feel like it's like insulting to our community. There could have been a huge opportunity here to really put out something amazing for the community for young people starting out with tarot dabbling, for beginners dabbling, trying to figure things out. It could have been amazing to continue this growth in the rest of the world, the zeitgeist, the society, to make our community less of a taboo. And whilst it is growing thing and people are becoming more interested and people are wanting to learn, this really makes it seem like a joke and it's insulting and frustrating and incredibly disappointing. And so for all of these reasons, that's my number one. And for all of the other decks that I talked about, I do feel somewhat bad that I didn't find them all appealing or they were lacking and I found that disappointing. This, I have no, like, I'm all right with this decision, right? So <laughs> with that being said, thank you so much for sticking through my rants. Thank you so much for, you know, spending your time with me and hanging out and talking about these decks. Let me know if you share the same opinions with me about them. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I always love reading your guys's opinions and keep in mind that's exactly what these are so with that being said again thank you so much and if you haven't already don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell on your way out of this video that way you will never miss an upload from me and i have linked in the eyes for each deck where you can look at the video i did on each of these if you're interested if you want you further um, in-depth looks of them feel free to do so and with that being said, don't forget to check out the description box too. I have a link tree link in there that'll take you to all of my socials plus my Etsy shop where you can purchase a private reading from me. So take a look at all of that and thank you so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.